but you can see it right there. Right now, not a lot of traffic this Friday afternoon. That vehicle did do a good choice as far as traffic goes. California Highway Patrol, number of vehicles behind it. But they will be passing through many a different jurisdiction, especially if this keeps going. So those uh, CHP vehicles, they're going to start switching out eventually. And, of course, they have the California Highway Patrol helicopter above it as well. And, again, you can see these high speeds as it's continuing on on that 5 freeway. Ooh, clocking 114, 113 miles per hour right now. I know the information right now, Stu, is preliminary. We do have some information that has come in that maybe the original want was a hit and run at Barstow and Ranchero. So that may be what started all this, a possible hit and run. And then I guess this suspect took off and here we are. Uh, apparently CHP pursuing this, again, this white Ford expedition. Uh, there is some damage on the driver's side, uh, dr driver's side door. There you see the, the damage right there, the black skid marks uh, along the side of that vehicle. Again, we don't know, but uh, some information coming in that could be possible hit and run which we do and so being able driving very very fast on the northbound 5 freeway Northbound 5 Freeway, and you can see it right there. It's going through Grosscrantz, so right now we're in the Norwalk Downey area. You know, these type of high speeds, and now like, you can see it, in the emergency lane. When they do this, I always get a little bit, eh, do that, oh my goodness, what's going on? But then I also get a little kind of happy, because I think to myself, there's a lot of debris out there in those emergency lanes. Maybe they're going to pick up a nail, something, something that's going to puncture one of those tires, and maybe bring it to an end peacefully and slowly. But look at this, 100 three miles an hour passing vehicles in that emergency lane like the, I mean, the emergency lane in that uh, carpool lane almost like they're standing mm -hmm. still that traffic really starting to build this is going to get very worrisome uh, as as we get closer and closer to the downtown los angeles area a lot of traffic out there these high speeds they cannot continue as that lane is going to be going away here shortly and you know the, this is all over a hit and run with a minor just a little bit of paint swap maybe some damage to the running board you got to wonder what else is going going on why this person is running and so erratically with this uh, with this you know intent to just not be ca not talk to law enforcement law enforcement by the way still behind it California Highway Patrol they're in the lead they have a helicopter above it that helicopter making calls to the guys on the ground as they might not be get doing this type of dangerous driving I'm gonna stay a little bit wider I won't lose the car uh, but you can see them they're actually right there one yeah. of the lead vehicles is right behind it and staying in that emergency Emergency lane at speeds of over a hundred miles an hour. Yeah, wow, what a pursuit. What a fast car chase right here. You only see one black and white, though, behind that vehicle at this point from this vantage point. But, Stu, I yep. want to say that even though there's minimal damage uh, on this car, if this, in fact, was a hit and run, you wonder what happened to the other guy, right? What did this vehicle run into? Now we're stuck in traffic, which yep. is certainly some good news. Hopefully not dangerous, erratic driving, though, for other drivers out there on the road. Definitely. You know, we saw that vehicle almost come to a complete stop. I, that is actually appreciated. I like it. A lot of these folks doing what they're supposed to do. They're hearing those lights and sirens from that vehicle behind it. They're moving out of the way, being predictable, getting out of the way of that law enforcement vehicle. But that also is giving that suspect a path to keep continuing as they're driving. It, it, this is one of those ones where it's good and bad. I never want to see anybody get hurt along with law enforcement. Law enforcement doesn't want that either. I've said that many times on air. I've got to bring that up again. You know, they are concerned about that driver as well as the civilians and, of course, their own law enforcement, the California Highway Patrol. In this case, they don't want to see anybody get hurt. So when those lights and sirens are on, people are getting out of the way, being predictable. And that is good for anybody that's involved. That's keeping everybody away from that suspect, but it's also giving that suspect an open lane to drive through. Uh, the speed's kind of going up and going down as, they're al as they are available to to that driver again though just a little bit of a paint swap right there and you just got to wonder what is going on why is she running at these type of ridiculous speeds to get away from law enforcement it has Arizona plates on it I wonder if maybe it's a rental I haven't heard that by the way sometimes they'll say that on the air on on the CHP frequencies they'll kind of say it comes back to a rental company hard going through those lanes right there cut off one of the vehicles but California Highway Patrol one of those vehicles right behind 
behind it, I'm venturing to say, yeah, they're the right, they're his buddies. There go. They're going to stay with this the best they can. Uh, you know, if, if anybody's wondering about a pit, I haven't heard it. I doubt they're going to do that on the freeway, especially with all these other civilian vehicles around. But believe me, if the opportunity comes up, they may use spike strips, and of course, they may use that pit maneuver, but not not when they're on the freeway, and especially not with other vehicles around it. That's right. It's uh, too precarious right now to throw down a, a spike strip with all of those other cars in traffic. The big concern is, though, uh, what happened before this, then during the hit and run, yeah. maybe minimal damage. Again, on this car, you don't know what happened to the other guy, so that is a big concern. We don't know that information right now, That's but what is kind of, oh, getting off off the freeway right yep. here getting off the freeway. You can see at Lakewood Boulevard. So th this is going to be one of those ones where if those high speeds continue, that's a big vehicle, but that is a newer expedition. So I'm not saying that it's going to it's going to handle like a Porsche or a sports car, but it's definitely going to be, look at this, oh, little, little, little off-road. Does it go off-road? I guess it does. Look at that, right through the grass, back onto the road. And, you know, she's got, look at the CHP. They're doing the same thing. Yep. And back onto the freeway. They, they, you know, we didn't see this, but we heard this earlier that now not, not that off-roading part, but we did hear them get off of the freeway for just a moment on the 91 and then get back on. So that's not the first time that this vehicle has done that. You know, you've got to wonder, though, is this a destination drive or not? Because it seems very much like she got on the 91, they had a lot of options, then they got onto the 5 freeway, but it really seems like it wasn't one of those, oh, I'm getting into traffic, let me just pick this other freeway. It almost seems like this is a destination. I'm just putting that out there. I've yeah. been wrong in the past. I'll be wrong in the future. But right now, we're going to keep an eye on it. The speed's slowing down, but you can see how fast cars down there. This is always very worrisome, especially when we're following it in a pursuit. Here's the good news, though. Despite all that traffic and sometimes slowing down, speeding up, we have not seen a collision. Okay. What you said so far. The innocent drivers out there just making their way on a Friday afternoon, getting to where they need to go, looking forward to the weekend. And the last thing you want to do is be stuck in a pursuit and actually get involved in one as well. So from what we see right now, thankfully, this driver has not collided or intentionally rammed any other car or gotten into any type of accident. So, so far, so good. We haven't jinxed it, hopefully. But again, those high speeds that we were seeing earlier triple digits that is really concerning as well as going off the freeway coming back on erratic driving is certainly something we don't want to see as well definitely we never want to see that but you did make that comment sandra that you never want to get you don't want to get caught in a pursuit believe me i want to be this, this this to me is something we love to report on we like to keep the uh we like to keep the public notified on what's going on and of course it is a pursuit we always want to see how this ends we want to we always hope that nobody is injured california highway patrol doing an amazing job they're staying with this one so many times a lot of the law enforcement because of the new policies they basically will let it go but for some reason there is something else to this. There has to be for the California Highway Patrol to stay with this for so long. Like you said, started in Barstow. Love the Barstow area, don't get me wrong, but that is so far away from here, and it made, has made its way all the way to this location. Going much slower out here as we're on the on the 5 Freeway northbound. Montebello is the off-ramp. Comrus is the city. If you know somebody that might be driving out here, I know it might be dangerous to call them or text them, but maybe you might want to let somebody know, if, especially if you know that they're on the northbound five hey you know what there might be a chase coming up just give them heads up but a lot of these folks they're getting the information firsthand california highway patrol lights and sirens are going and it is actually clearing the roadway there you go again and you can see that uh, expedition kind of getting up a little bit of speed as they're making their way through the commerce area going to be passing the citadel here in just a moment let's take you back to a moment we saw just a couple of minutes ago with this suspect in that white expedition going off road getting off the Lakewood exit right there and then getting right back onto the freeway leading CHP officers to go off road as well following this vehicle not letting this suspect go and clearly the chase is still on the good news though we haven't seen any collisions as I've mentioned but clearly erratic driving as you see right there going off road after uh, getting off the freeway there and then getting back on Stu you mentioned a destination in terms of does this driver have a destination in mind maybe Maybe uh, 
this driver is going somewhere that they are familiar with knowing these freeways. So it's clear that uh, perhaps there's a purpose in where the person is going towards. We don't know that as of right now, but uh, that is always the big question. And again, Arizona license plate, not clear what that means either. Right, Arizona license plates. A lot of times, these might be rental cars. We've seen that. We see that quite a lot. Looks like we're maybe taking another off ramp here. You know, I don't think California. Nope, we're not. Right through that Gore point. You know, California Highway Patrol is not going to just kind of walk away from this if this vehicle gets off of the freeway. Say right now in the uh, Southgate area, they're not just going to be like, okay, well, you know, not on our freeways. We're done. We'll just clean our hands of this and walk away. They're going to stay with this, and, and maybe they might hand it off to a local agency. But a lot of times, we've seen it in the past. California Highway Patrol is going to follow this to the end. That vehicle is still making these little bits of turns out here, kind of blending in, but that's not what they're doing. Tris trying to navigate a lot of this traffic. It is Friday traffic and definitely not Friday light. You can see it right there. I'm going to keep a little bit of a wider shot. It, you know, the, the emergency lane is always wide open and it apparently is what she likes to drive on, but right now, staying in that far right lane, you can see those speeds picking up once again. That truck, you got to wonder about the fuel economy. What was the, how much gas do they have? There's all these questions, and I think that's one of the reasons why viewers like to watch a pursuit. They want to know. They want to see how this ends. They want to figure out what did they do. It looks like we are taking an off-ramp. I don't think we're going to go to the Citadel, but it looks like we're going to get into a lot of traffic. This is one of those spots. I know this off-ramp. I know this area. And it made a pretty good choice right there, making basically a U-turn, coming back to, uh, southbound here, and, and we're going to be on Telegraph. This is, again, a nice wide-open area. California Highway Patrol going to stay right, by, right behind it, but those folks, if she starts running red lights, this could become very, very scary for a lot of folks down there. That is a big, heavy SUV. Oh. There's also the Commerce Casino. Hopefully, they don't decide to pull into there. I'm going to try to keep control of that camera. Sorry about that. Hope wow. everybody took their drama mean, but you can see it right there, getting in that center gore point. Yeah. Speed's really starting to pick up once again, but the uh, law enforcement right behind it, and of course, that helicopter not going to let this thing get out of site. Hopefully Sky Fox can do the same. That's right. The CHP helicopter, a Sheriff's oh. Department her helicopter tracking this vehicle. And we know that there are at least three black and whites oh. on its tail. You see traffic at a standstill oh. and that driver oh. running the light right there. That could have been yes. very dangerous, but you see traffic on both sides and this driver totally disregarding that, going in the other lane, head on to traffic and then running through that light. Thankfully, no collision here. We do not want to see any loss of now life or injuries or any innocent drivers being impacted by this, but clearly that is very wow. erratic yeah. driving right there. And this driver, where are they turning on to at this point? Well, we just made our way onto Washington. I drive this area not a lot, but I'm very familiar with this spot. And you know what? Some of these streets out here, I, I don't like to drive it at freeway speeds, and I'm not being chased by at freeway speeds. It's at regular street speeds, and I'm not being chased by anybody. It can get very confusing, but again, she doesn't seem to be driving like, as, like I said, maybe going to a destination, maybe not. Made our way into a neighborhood now, but those speeds not slowing down, that stuff always kind of bothers me, and I'm sure a lot of the viewers as well. Hard turn right there. I think she actually played a little bit of rubber as she made that turn. Didn't see that fishtail. But look at that. 50 miles an hour, that big heavy SUV in a small neighborhood. Another hard turn right there. That truck it definitely has some sort of stability control on it. No no fishtail at all. And that was a pretty fast turn, and that's a heavy vehicle. California Highway Patrol, they're staying with it. Ooh, right through a stop sign right there. Again, they're not keeping track of this stuff. They're not like somebody's not sitting down there going, oh, they ran a stop sign. Oh, they ran a... a a red light, but when they do it, what I'm concerned about is somebody else might be in the area. There might be somebody just walking, riding their bike. Who the heck knows? But when these cars are moving at 50 miles an hour, running red lights out here, that always is very concerning for law enforcement, definitely have all the viewers as well. And again, you can see it moving along, making their way back northbound. We're going to be on Washington Boulevard. This is a bigger street, but uh, traffic today, oh, making another turn. Maybe she's trying to get back to the freeway. Oh, it's so concerning when they drive into a residential area like this, blowing stop signs and street lights. And we are getting to the point, 2.15 right now, schools letting out for a lot of schools Ooh. in the area in the next half hour to hour or so. So hopefully this will come to some kind of a conclusion before.
before there's a big, big threat in those neighborhoods. But clearly when she first turned onto Telegraph, I was park. hoping and hopeful that it was more of an industrial area as we've seen around the Citadel, but not so much where this person's going, more so in the residential areas at this point. And you're looking at that late model white Ford Expedition maneuvering pretty well in those high speeds around those turns, making fast, uh, quick turns right there, trying to evade the black and whites, but clearly they, they got their sights on her. Got her sights on her. We're going to have to move Skyfox just a little bit because of that sound wall. Again, she's riding that emergency lane right there. Now we're going southbound five. So we were doing north for most of that drive for that since we've been on air just about. So now we're turning around and going southbound. I'm going to cross out. If, if this is a bingo game or this is a one of those ones where we're just checking stuff off, I'm going to cross off destination unless she missed her destination. But it looks like we're just turning around and now we're going the opposite direction. We're going to be in that emergency lane. You see it right there. And it, the speed's slow down just a little bit but look at all that traffic and that california highway patrol I, you know what i didn't grab the shop number that's that number on that roof to make sure or see if this is going to be the same person that entire time that same driver but if it is mm. boy that guy's going to get a gold star when they get back to their base because i tell you they've been doing a fantastic job keeping up with this uh the suspect and also being safe looks like we're going through it there was a yeah. green light but we're doing that on again off again a little bit of a rope-a-dope another california highway patrol you know what he's probably just sitting there making sure people People are doing the right thing with the with the um, uh, high high what is that the HOV lane? But uh, today maybe he's going to get a little bit of a pursuit action. Squeezing on, not a good choice. Look at all that oh. traffic right there. So if that emergency lane goes away, not 100% familiar with it, but if that goes away, she's going to get stuck in that traffic. That might give the California Highway Patrol an opportunity to do something. But you know what? What can they do? They can't put themselves in, in, in harm's way. They can't put themselves in front of that vehicle. A pit maneuver, not with all these other cars around. Oop, doing a little bit more uh, off-roading right there. Huh. But, you know, the good thing is, Sandra, every time they hit those curbs, I'm always thinking to myself, how good are those tires? How, right. how did she hit that curb? You know, maybe she'll bend the rim. Maybe she'll crack the rim. Maybe the, it'll bring, uh, pop a tire. But right now, though, looks like this pursuit's continuing. And uh, in Southbound 5 is where we're at through Commerce. Wow. And clearly, people don't understand or realize the <clears throat> amount of training that these CHP officers undergo in terms of how to drive. It sounds like a basic thing but it's a completely different tactic and skill when they have to pursue a driver like this who's erratic, who's a threat to society, who's dangerous, and driving at high speed. So these CHP officers are trained for hours and hours knowing what to do, how to maneuver, where to basically protect the public, and how to pursue suspects like this who are a threat and who have, in fact, uh, perhaps done something it, um, worthy of an arrest. So so clearly uh, this is a skill that is not to be taken lightly because again the hours and hours of training that goes into knowing how to do this it, it is art and a skill especially here in LA when you consider how long these pursuits Commerce. can last so initially just want to let our viewers know this pursuit started at about 131 the initial want is a hit and run in Barstow and Ranchero that's according to the CHP and the information we're getting into our new newsroom and then there we go the suspect took off and so a pursuit began and so far they have not let up on this suspect who has gone uh, to, uh, northbound on the five and then back south on the five so uh, clearly not sure uh, what this driver intends to do but thankfully we haven't seen any collisions and uh, we have seen though erratic driving at high speeds and also going against traffic running stop signs and traffic lines so uh, a big concern for the community down there. Big concern for sure. You know, California Highway Patrol and all law enforcement officers that are involved in these pursuits. Pursuit training is very serious. Those officers talk about multitasking. A lot of times they are actually making calls on the radio saying where they are, keeping an eye on other options that they can take while they're chasing that suspect and also making sure that the public is safe. They do a lot behind the wheel. That suspect, all that person is doing right now is driving fast and erratic. And again, of course, she doesn't want to collide with something, but, you know, in that same 
second breath, it could happen so quickly. And if they were making our way right now on Telegraph, you see the traffic out there. I want to stay a little bit tighter just because of the when we go through these lights. But that one was green. We did about two red lights there just a few moments ago. And look at that, getting a little stuck, getting a little stuck. Hopefully they don't get into that parking garage. But it, this is kind of the thing. Sandra, a lot of times we see no. these chases. A lot of times they're suspects. A lot of times they they you know they they know. Oh, let's we go, go to LAX. Let's go to yeah. this parking garage. Let's dump the vehicle. This person doesn't seem to have that type of mindset. She's uh, basically just driving fast, staying away from the officers, playing a game of keep away, which again is not going to last very long because eventually the California Highway Patrol is going to follow this vehicle to wherever it goes. If those cars stay behind it or if that helicopter follows it, some law enforcement is going to keep an eye on it for sure. But right now, another I believe that was another red light. Thank goodness wow. there was nothing going on right there. California Highway Patrol right behind it, two vehicles, and again, that one is, I believe, has been behind it since we picked it up at that 91.5 split, and that vehicle, let's keep it, let's take a look at some of these speeds. I want to get up close to it and just kind of get you a real number. So 60, 60 miles an hour right now on Atlantic. Uh, this is, you know, now we're in the East Los Angeles area. This is a, you know, we know that it's going to start getting very tight out here. The cars are going to become, traffic's going to become a lot heavier, and of course, a lot more pedestrian traffic as well. You can see it right there coming up to another, probably a red light. But this is an area where you have sidewalk cafes that we see right there. You have street vendors. You got some construction going on. This is going to be an area that gets really tight. Pedestrians in this area, I always worry. But this uh, big SUV continues to move along. That female driver, hit and run minor hit and run and this is going on I wonder what is really behind all this and I wonder if we're ever going to really find out but th we know that we're going to follow it as long as we can hopefully that suspect is going to go into custody without any type of injury to herself and or anybody else as we go against traffic out here uh, yeah. looks like we're running another red light and it, it's just it, it, you have to wonder why is this happening why is she doing this why but you know it is one of those ones where we just going to watch it, keep an eye on it. California Highway Patrol doing an amazing job staying behind it. East Los Angeles unincorporated. They do have the sheriffs out here, but some of this area is actually patrolled by California Highway Patrol. We'll keep it, and, and uh, that was one of the things too. We talk about it during the chases. Uh, there's a sheriff's uh, vehicle right there. Believe me, he's not blindsided by that. He knows what is going on. He's been listening on the radio. They're all talking to each other, going across the median and uh -huh. into oncoming traffic. I don't know if those uh, cruisers can do that. That's the reason no. why. That was, there you go, we were talking about pursuit training. Yep. The one that's behind them, that's one of the reasons why they do that. Because if the front one has a problem, can't get there, oh, you know what, my buddy's going to be able to scoop around and get there and it's a canine oh maybe we're gonna get some dog action at the end of this but right now we're gonna keep going that's a pursuit still moving East Los Angeles well 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 established out there I wonder if we're gonna get the Boyle Heights in a few moments but that uh, that white uh, expedition this morning or this afternoon still going and that driver determined to stay away from law enforcement yeah, you know, the majority of times you'll never know why a pursuit happens or begins and starts and ends, right? You never know the mindset of these drivers. We follow these and just hope and pray that nothing bad happens to the innocent public and to uh, life and property, basically. And it is such a dangerous situation when you're in these communities, in these neighborhoods. Again, approaching pickup time for a lot of students Ooh. and families out there. And then you see a high-speed, erratic driver like this who knows what they're thinking where they're trying to go and why they're doing this but clearly a threat to the neighborhoods out there but the hopeful thing here from what I see is because she is off the freeway this driver could perhaps um, there could be a point where CHP could throw down the strip um, spike strips perhaps do a pit maneuver and stop this vehicle well, you know, Sandra, we we all we've all been watching a lot of pursuits. We live in Los Angeles. How can we not? But you know, the thing is, is there's got to be a lot of stuff that lines up. The stars yeah. have really got to line up to, to for them to do the uh, throw out that spike strip. And right now, we're in an area. I'm just kind of looking. We're back in the Southgate area, so this is a spot where it's going to be the sheriff's department. Could they get involved? Yeah, there's a possibility. But you know, the 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 car has got to have the police or the sheriff's vehicle has got to 
have the spike strips in the trunk. The uh, person driving it has to be certified, and then the opportunity has to be there as well. So there's a lot going on. There, it isn't just like law enforcement, everybody's got it, we're just going to jump out and throw yeah. a spike strip mm -hmm. on the ground, and that's going to be the end of it. Um, and also, it's, it is a, a CHP pursuit. So they've got to be talking to the, uh, 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 to the, in this case, the Sheriff's Department. So there's a lot of, there's yeah. a lot in the mix right there. I'm guessing right now we're just going to keep following it. You know, Senator, you kept bringing up the schools, and I'm seeing all those. Uh, we yeah. just passed two school buses and three school buses. There we go. Makes me think there might be a school around here, and that's another thing. You know, we just don't want to see anybody get hurt, heaven forbid, a child. But there you go, kind of went a little bit against traffic and a little bit back onto the onto the road. If anything. I'm seeing this vehicle moving just a little bit slower. So I'm wondering if maybe the adrenaline's starting to wear off for the driver or something's going on because the speeds, uh, you know what, I'm just looking at the numbers. Maybe it just seems like it's going a little slower. They're still going about 50, 60 miles an hour here on these surface streets. And also, you know, we don't know. Is this her vehicle? Is this, uh, you know, is it a rental? But I would venture to say there is some sort of navigation, any of these new vehicles, especially a big, nice SUV like an Expedition, probably has some sort of uh, navigation in there. So if she's trying to get back to some location, say a freeway, she oh, don't, don't, don't. oh, thank goodness for that. It wouldn't have been bad, but it would have been something right there. Mm -hmm. And that's coming to a stop, almost rear-ended that vehicle, probably getting out of the way for the lights and sirens. And, you know, that's, you know, all law enforcement say that when you hear those lights and sirens, get to the right if you can, but be predictable if you can't. And uh, so I'm sure, like, they're hearing those lights and sirens, they're moving out of the way, but that suspect, she's just thinking, okay, I can get by. But uh, you saw it right there. There were two close calls. Uh, but again, those speeds, way too high for these roads. And again, we're just keeping an eye on it. Just don't want to see anybody get hurt. That's right. Let's not only talk about speed. Let's show you moments ago how erratic this driver was, in fact, when trying to evade the CHP officers on this person's tail. Let's take a look at how this driver got off the freeway, then off-roaded and then tried to circle back and got back on the freeway, trying to lose the black and whites that were tailing this driver, but clearly they know better and are still on the case here. So clearly uh, this is the erratic driving that we've been following. We've been seeing not only the high speeds here, but uh, this type of maneuver, and that is something that shows the, the capability freeway. of this suspect that they're in pursuit of. Uh, traffic not stopping this driver either. The driver going on the wrong side of the street against traffic, blowing through stoplights right there and stop signs. We're, so a very big threat the freeway, at this right? point. And it's really, really disconcerting to see this driver go past four or so school buses that we saw in that neighborhood, in these residential communities with school, I'm sure, being let out soon and parents probably trying to pick up their kids from school to start their weekend on this Friday or perhaps these children filing onto these school buses. So clearly this is something that CHP wants to put an end to to make sure this driver who is driving erratically and dangerously gets off the streets too. That's right. You know, that, that is the ultimate goal for the law enforcement. They just want to bring this thing to an end peacefully. Ultimate goal for Skyvox is just to keep an eye on it and make sure we can see where this goes. Going around a building, this is in the Monterey Park area. I would venture to say we are getting into an area that has a lot of city buildings and also law enforcement buildings out here, which is unusual in itself that the suspect is going through this area. But you can see that vehicle. There was very little traffic on that road. This looks to be a a little bit more industrial, more businesses here. And when I say businesses, I mean office buildings, things like that. They're making their way behind those trees, but we're going to keep an eye on it for sure. Uh, California Highway Patrol, they're down there on the ground. They're doing what they can to keep that public safe. Coming up to what looks to be, uh, they actually was stopped because there was a California Highway Patrol officer there, making keeping an eye on traffic. That shows you the coordination and the ability that law enforcement have. Oh, ha, ha! 
Oh, oh, oh geez. Gosh. Look at that. Man, okay. she got some air on that. Oh, she didn't oh. like that. Did not like that. Doors are open. She's out. She's out running and uh, keeping, a, the, you know, the law enforcement's got to be like right there. Of course they are. Right. And getting out running. You know what? I got to give it to her. That was probably the smartest thing she could have done, especially after that move. That truck got all four wheels off the ground there when it hit that, uh, hit that bump. She's basically oh. running to the back seat. There oh, you wow. go. Taking her down. And there's a, uh, there there's the go. canine. There's the canine. But you know what, buddy? Oh, the poor dog just wanted to get a little bit of work in but not today not today and uh you got her you got her in custody she practically ran into the waiting right. arms of straight, the law enforcement to <laughs> chp patrol car that's right uh, she knew this yeah. was the so, end Yes, but you know what? When when she got air like that, really, truly, of all this crazy we saw this morning, uh, this afternoon, you know, that was probably the smartest and best thing that that suspect could have done was jump out of that car, especially after she got air like that. And uh, again, law enforcement, California Highway Patrol. I would venture to say that guy in blue. I would say that guy came all the way from Barstow. Yeah, of course, she's going to have a long ride back to being in custody. But again, coming to an end out here, and we're going to be in the East Los Angeles area near Southgate. Other law enforcement arriving. But wow, what a wild! ride for sure. Thank goodness nobody was injured. And if whatever that collision was in Barstow, hopefully that other person is okay. Absolutely. Thankfully, nobody was hurt in all this. And uh, Stu, we appreciate you and the crew up in Sky Fox for your work. And we appreciate everyone tuning in. We will right now send you back to regular programming. And you will be with Colleen Sullivan. All right. And I'm sure. burning in Southern California. Is a turn. Assisted by the uh, East LA sheriffs on this pursuit. It was a very dangerous pursuit. She was driving, uh, running red lights, uh, driving on the center divider of the uh, freeway on the shoulder of the road uh, against traffic at times, running red lights uh, in and out of traffic. It was very dangerous, high speed in that heavy SUV. And uh, at this point, she came into a, a neighborhood, hit a couple of dips, and the car kind of lost control. She may have done some damage to it. That's when she decided to jump out and run.